Hi YouTubers, I'm El Gracian from elbowpepper.com. It's an exciting day for me today out in the garden. It's the very beginning of July 2016 and my annual vegetable crops are doing really well. I want to show you how they're looking at this point in the season and show you what I'm doing in a very small space to try to get as much of a bountiful harvest as I can. Doing high density plantings, using sub-irrigated containers, using conventional raised beds, using some basic trellis systems so why don't we get in here and you'll be able to see how things are progressing through the summer here in the back of our place you can see the trellis for the passion fruit which is doing pretty well there's that sub irrigated box that I have here are the strawberries and the trellis that did have peas but now we have beans and right here, this is a lot of watermelon. Here are the peppers that I've tried to optimize for light. Last year I had about 10 plants, so I've shrunk it down to about seven plants and they're still filling the space just as well. You wouldn't even know there were any less plants they're doing an excellent job of setting some fruit so that's great to see that those are progressing I have a few different varieties and uh, maybe I'll be able to talk about them later on in the season got our fig in an air pot and here are the herbs Doing pretty well. So, this watermelon, this is three watermelon plants, and they're all growing inside of this box alongside the peppers. And I want to show you what I did to try to create a level of separation between the root systems. What I did is I put a layer, a strip of uh, plastic, kind of like you do with a rhizome barrier. So I, I put that down, a strip of plastic, uh, the whole width here to be able to try to separate the root systems, isolate them from each other. So that even though it's one big container, it's almost like it's been subdivided into two containers. Sorry, it's just a little bit jittery here. I'm trying to like not step on these watermelon plants and they're everywhere, which is exciting to say the least. We're setting some fruit in a variety of different spots. I mean, we've got, we've got actual watermelons just hanging off the vine. So, be able to see which ones set and which ones drop off but there are definitely some viable plants coming out of this I used the trellis to try to divert a lot of the plants energies this direction uh, the Sun is over on that side coming this way and uh, and then as the plants got going well there's no stopping them but uh, that just shows <laughs> how much potential there is in a sub-irrigated container or a large sub-irrigated box or bed. Um, and you'll be seeing that a little bit more on the other side here. I've kept good records of all of the fertilizing that I did in these systems this year so that later on I'll be able to share exactly what I used, how much of it, and what volume of container or what area I used it. So that will assist, I think, quite a bit in replicating that moving forward. I have a little experiment that I've started once again using blue buckets just like last year but this time we're using some zucchinis and I'm testing some different types of soils so stay tuned you'll be able to see what that's all about. The kiwi over here is starting to climb so I'm able to 
start training it. Just got done deadheading the salvia, so that'll kick more flowers into production very soon. And look at what's going on with these pine, alpine, I'm sorry, alpine strawberries. They're, they're just going insane off of this worm box. And then, and I'm like stepping on these watermelons. And then we have this hyssop and the, the bees love it. The aronia is back here, chokeberry. And I have a little home that I've located for my carpenter bees, which are good pollinators. You can only see them around here just doing their thing, taking care of business. So I don't have any problems with them in my setup, in my home, uh, because of having a brick home and block garages and things like that, it's not an issue for me. All right, that's what we have going on in this space. That's how it's looking. Now let's go to the other side of the property. Here in this corner of the lot, it is a cooler microclimate. It's much shadier, temperature is lower, and uh, I don't use that for vegetable production, but I have tried to fit in some things that are more apt to grow in the shade. So I'm trying those out, such as currants. Um, this is a little bit shady as well, and I'm trying a thimbleberry right here. So see how that goes. Even this gooseberry can do better in the shade, and I'm actually uh, getting plenty of gooseberry gooseberries that are setting here, so they're ripening up. That's great. And then as it gets a little bit sunnier or coming around this corner, then I have a nice spot for my blueberries. This is all acid-loving things that I've put in here. I've tried to condition the soil in order to get that pH adjusted as needed, and I think stuff's starting to respond and grow well. I have a little fig tucked in here chive box and above here is where I had had peas but I've swapped those out for beans so I'm hoping that I can get this trellis filled like last year with my beans um, they're a little bit slower in, in going the weather has been different this year I have the plants at the bottom here trying to train them up and we'll see how well they respond by the time the summer's up here is my four-in-one stone fruit, the combination peach, plum, apricot, and nectarine. I'm trying to train it, to spread it, to get a good spacing and picking just a couple representatives in the way of branches for each variety. And I think it's going to be pretty well balanced. So far, it's looking like we're getting there. So that's over here on this end. And... Here, this is a conventional raised bed. We have garlic, I already pulled out half of it. The rest is gonna be coming out very soon. And rather than leaving that space empty until the fall, I have already started some seedlings, a canary melon, and I'm going to be putting that in here. We have, due to the longer days, we have the onions that are starting to form that bigger bulb. and. Um, think that we're going to have a good onion crop this year. Uh, every year trying to get a little bit better and better. This is a sub-irrigated box. This has my lettuce. Much of it is beginning to bolt and go to seed now, but we did get some nice harvests, and I actually have some here that is still ready for me to pick. I just need to get on that. So this spot is doing pretty well. And as we come over here, you can see more of the perennials, some comfrey. There's some currants there. But now here, the cold frame. I had popped the glass off, been growing some corn in here. I did lose some of my very, very young seedling corn. Uh, some just never even made it past the surface of the soil. I was trying a little bit of a Ruth Stout thing, using some organic mulch, just some leaves and different things. And I think that the pill bugs were so happy they didn't pay attention to the living crops versus the dead decaying material. And so in order to uh, fill out the rest of this space, we have the original corn, but then I also have some smaller ones that I planted in here and I started them from seed in containers. 
some little seedling trays and then transferred them. And so this is my first time actually using corn transplants rather than just doing a direct sow method. And I want to see how that corn works out. It's a little test to see if that's an option, especially when you're fighting lots of pill bugs. Now, coming over to here is where you can see, yeah, a lot of growth in the sub-irrigated totes. Most of these, the gray ones, are all like a beige, they're all 30 gallon totes. And here this broccoli are in, these are in some 18 gallon totes. This is a purple broccoli. I've already gotten some off of and we have some extra shoots here to cut off and enjoy. But in each of these totes I have a squash. This is a curry squash, K-U-R-I. And we do have at least one that's already setting pretty well. But all along here, this is all being hugged by a different type of squash all the way around this corner here. And this is the spaghetti squash. I did this last year, we really enjoyed it. And instead of doing two plants, I'm only doing one in this tote, but I actually have more fruit setting than with the two plants. I am just amazed at how this has exploded. And I do have one more type of squash I'm trying out this year. This is the second string, uh, the first variety of something different. There was a melon that never germinated, so I tried this acorn squash and it's coming along. So I'm hoping we have enough time in the growing season and I'm hoping that this can still get up in here to be able to get all the benefits of that sunlight before it's completely choked out by everything else. The potatoes seem like they've done well and hopefully we'll actually get a good harvest this year. I kept a really good track of how I did things this year to see if I can get better results than the previous season. If you look right up at the top here, you can see some corn that's uh, kind of poking up through the canopy. And as with previous seasons, once again, I do have corn in this single tote. I have 11 plants and they've really had to fight to uh, make it up to the top, but I think they're getting enough light. We'll see how this works out. A little bit of an experiment, I guess you could say. This tomato in this PVC cage that I built is a single plant. So this is all one indeterminate tomato and in this 30 gallon tote. It grows tomatoes that look like this. They're ripe when they look just like that. They're very delicious, very sweet. Then finally I have my last string of corn that I started for this tote. I had to pull it out from here that way it would actually be able to get some light. Things are just so crazy. The growth is explosive here. On this concrete pad, we're actually able to grow a little bit more than a four by eight area, quite a lot of vegetables. So this is very exciting to say the least, and I definitely will do another update on things as the season progresses and be able to share that with you guys. All right guys, so that should do it for today. Thanks for taking time to watch this video. I hope that it has given you some ideas on some things that you can try. If you have a very small, limited space, maybe in an urban setting, maybe you don't even have soil that you can grow on, that doesn't mean that you can't have a garden, and that doesn't mean that you can't have big plants that give you a large bounty of fruit and vegetables. So give it a shot, guys. One thing that can help in many challenging situations is looking into the use of sub-irrigated containers, beds, and boxes by having that water reservoir in there that can deal with many challenges, not just including drought, but other things as well. So consider that as an option if it's something that would fit your needs. Regardless, get out there and garden. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and as always, happy gardening.